Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad, his family and his companions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon you all. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah reward you with goodness all for coming. Alhamdulillah, uh, we are starting our aqidah, which is our doctrine series, the belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the beliefs of Islam, right? And we talked last time about uh, many things. And uh, I started with tawheed. Tawheed means the monotheism, means to believe in only one God and not to associate any gods with them. Just a recap of last time, we talked about the differences between what we called rububiyyah and uluhiyyah, the lordship and the worship, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the lord of the whole universe. He's the one who created everything. And then we talked about the worship, that he is the only one worthy to be worshipped. And he has no picture. So we're not supposed to make a picture of Allah. He has no statue. So we're not supposed to make any statue for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not take a form of a human, does not take a, a physical form, right? And then we talked about that, okay, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Almighty has different names. Allah, because the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that there is a 99 names for Allah. And if anyone mentioned these names, he will enter heaven, Jannah. Right. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not say what are these names. He did not say, OK, the name of Allah is Al-Jameel. The name of Allah is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. He did not say what are these names specifically. There are different names that Allah has described himself. He said when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he described himself as Ar-Rahman means the most, the gracious. Ar-Rahim means the merciful. He described himself as Al-Hakim, means the wise. He described himself that he is Al-Alim, means the most knowledgeable. But we cannot come and make up names for Allah and say, oh, he's the cute, for example. We're not supposed to do that. Or like he is the avenger. We, we cannot say that. We only describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just the way Allah described himself in the Quran. So let's go over here. Some of the descriptions of Allah or the attributes of Allah. We talked about the difference between the name and the attribute. The name is the name itself. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his name is Al-Alim. Allah's name is, uh, Allah's, his name is Al-Hayy. Al-Hayy means the, the living. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the uh, Al-Hakim, means the wise, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says about his names as it is in the Quran. But sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself in the form of an action like in the verb. So for example, he says that Allah does not die. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no, nothing called that Allah dies. No, so it does not die. So here it's negate the, negate the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of dying, right? Uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa, this is in chapter two, verse 256. That means Allah is the only God that there's no God but him. Means that the sustainer and al hay means the living. Means he does not sleep and he does not feel sleepy. So those are the attributes of Allah, that he does not sleep and he does not feel sleepy. So this is one of his attributes. It comes as an action. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like the, aggress the aggressors and Allah loves the believers. One of his attributes is the loving that he loves, but who he, he loves, he loves the ones who do good actions. He loves the believers. He does not like the disbelievers or the ones who disobey him. So this is how Allah described himself by attributes and names. We have the names and attributes. And I would like to discuss some of these names and attributes for you, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is the living, al-hayy. Now, this is one of the attributes that it can also not only go, comes under the name of, of Al-Hay, but also can come under different names. Like, for example, it says here, Allah says, It says over here, It means, and rely upon the ever-living who does not die. So Al-Hay is the ever-living. So here it comes as a name. But for example, I will give you another dua that the Prophet, peace be upon him, he says. So we can use this name as a dua, as a supplication. When we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we praise him and we say, Ant al -hay. You are the living. Alladhi la yamut, who does not die. Wal jinn wal insu yamutun. However, the jinn, which is the demons, and the ants, the humans, die. 
So everything in this life die. And remember, I said one time in the Quran, Allah says that everyone will taste this. Everyone, even the, the angel of death will taste this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not taste this. Allah does not die. Unlike the Christians who say that their God dies, he died on the cross and he was resurrected in the third day. So that's different. Allah says that he does not die at all. Subhanallah. One of his attributes as well, the knowledge. Allah is knowledgeable. Now, can Allah be exist in his physical form everywhere? Like Christians say that Allah is everywhere. Muslims say that Allah is everywhere, but not by physical form, by his knowledge. By his knowledge, not by physical form. So I'm going to give you an example. One of the scholars, he said, he said that Allah knows where is the ant, a black ant that is standing on a black rock in a very dark night, in a very uh, condensed uh, uh, forest. And he knows exactly what is this ant doing and how it is walking and how many steps is walking and how many cells has in its body. Subhanallah. So that's all by Allah's knowledge, not by his physical form. So we cannot say, oh, Allah is, you know, Allah is in the room over here with us. I can feel him. Like some people, they say that's the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. No. Okay. Allah is everywhere by his knowledge. So we can feel some good things happening, some spiritual, like while we're sitting over here, actually the angels are around us right now sitting with us, but we don't see them. The angels have their wings are rubbing with each other around us because the prophet peace be upon him. He said, whenever there is a, a, a circle where people are mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels will come down and they give us that, that feeling of peace, that feeling of spirituality, not because Allah is over here physically with us or the Holy Ghost or whatever they call it. Right. So Allah exists everywhere, but with his knowledge. And there is so many ayahs in, the, in here. It says in Surah Fatir, Allah knows the unseen things of the, of the samawat, means the skies and the heavens and the earth and the earth. So there are so many things that we don't know about. The, the technology and the science still discovering it at, until now. But Allah knows it all because he's the one who created it. He knows everything because he created it. Now, if someone invented a car or invented a, ma a machine or something like that, he knows every single part of that machine, right? Subhanallah. How about Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the all-knowing. He is the creator of all things. So he knows everything, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَإِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى means even he knows our secrets inside our hearts. So anything we think, Allah knows that we think that. Unlike the deism, the deists, those that they came in the 40s, in the Second World War, where they started thinking that, oh, Allah created the things and he just left it. He left it alone. So whatever you think, whatever you say, Allah does not know anything. At the end, Allah will, uh, will uh, you know, if you were good, you will go to heaven. If you were bad, you will go to hellfire. This is what they think. And unfortunately, in this world over here, it's very secular. Here in the United States, many people think this way. Oh, Allah is good. I know that I'm going to be go to heaven because I'm good. I'm good. Khalas. I don't need to pray. I don't need to worship Allah. Those are the deists. Those are the agnostics who don't believe. They believe in the existence of God, but they don't know which religion to, to follow. They call, I, I don't follow organized religion. That's what they say, you know, subhanAllah. Allah is Al-Alim. He knows even our hearts. By knowing this and believing in, that, in this, you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is the all-knowing. He knows everything. And that also give us what? Give us the, the, the feeling of getting scared of Allah, being fearful of Allah. That if we have bad suspicions about somebody or something, or we are thinking about something bad, or we do something in private, you know, wrongly, we know that someone is watch watching us. Allah is watching us. So we stop doing it. You understand? Because many people, they think, oh, well, no one is watching me, so I can do whatever I want. No one is watching me. I can steal. No one is watching me. I can kill someone and just bury him, and no one would know. No one would notice. No one would know that I killed him. Astaghfirullah. Right? 
And that's why we have so much evil in the world because they don't have that fear of Allah inside their heart. They transgress because they think that, oh, Allah is not going to, Allah is not watching. Allah is not going to punish me for that because he doesn't know. Astaghfirullah. When you have this feeling of, of Allah that is knowing everything and you have become shy from Allah and fearful of, of Allah, that will stop you of doing the haram things. One of the other things is al-irada. It's the will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have the will. Now I have will. I want to study and finish my PhD, for example. I have a will. I have, I have something, a wish that I want to do right? Uh, my friend has a wish that she wants to go shopping and get a, a very good computer. Another person is having a wish or want to buy a car. Subhanallah. However, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like the human will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he wills something, he does it right away. His will will, will execute right away. Subhanallah. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if he wants something, he will do it right away. Kun fayakun. He would say be and it is. And this is how he created the world. He created the sun, be and it was sun. The, the light, it was like this. He created Adam. He, he, this is how he created. He created him from uh, mud, from the soil, and then he breathed in him and it was. Jesus the same way. Many Christians, they think that, okay, well, Jesus came from Allah's soul or from Allah's spirit. Allah, Allah's spirit is, a, is Holy Spirit, is the Holy Ghost, is Jibril, is, is Gabriel. It's not, from, it's not Allah himself. It's not like a person of Allah. It is not like the Christians believe, right? And I do a lot of comparison because I used to be Christian, became Muslim, and I have people here from a Christian background. So you understand what I'm saying, right? And so I have to do that because I have to show you the separate line here between what Muslims believe and what non-Muslims believe. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the example of Jesus is the same as the example of Adam. He created him and he said, be and it was. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a new baby inside the womb of Mary, not because it came, it came from a father and a mother. Just like Adam. Adam, he has no mother and he has no father. And it be and it was. The same thing with Jesus. He created him in the womb of Mary, peace be upon her, and it was just like this. Subhanallah. Right? Irada means it is nafida. Nafida, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills something, it happens right away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innama amruhu, the matter of Allah, that if he wants something, he would say, kun fayakun, be and it is. This is in Surah Yasin. Also in Surah Al-Rad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if Allah wills something bad to someone, uh, to some people, he will give it to them right away. He will punish them right away. Why Allah would something bad for some people? Because those people are bad, not because Allah is bad. Astaghfirullah. Okay, because many people, this is a misconception. They say, well, Allah in Islam is very punishable. He's, he does a lot of harsh things. It's because the people actually don't follow. And Allah showed them the way. And he showed them also what are the consequences will be. Allah will not punish people without a warning. He will warn them first. A mother, when she wants to punish a, a, her girl or her boy, she will tell him, don't do that or I will punish you. Or I, you will be grounded today. So she gives them the instruction and then she will give them what's the consequences. And she tells them, if they were good, I will give you some snack. I will, I will let you go out. I will let you play. And if you're not good, what happened? You will be grounded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mathalul a'la, the best example. We cannot make example of people with people, but I want to make it closer to you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave us the instructions. He told us this is the way to follow. And if you do good, this is your reward. You go to Jannah. I will give you blessings. You will be spiritually higher. You will be happier. And if you don't do it, then you will be dep depressed. I will take that blessing from you. Uh, I will punish you either on this world or uh, hereafter, in the, in the hereafter, in, in, uh, in hellfire. Allah give us all the instructions in the Quran, in the Hadith, everything, right? And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills someone to go to hellfire, it's because that person did not follow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he wants everyone as Dar as -salam, dar to be in the, in the house of peace, which is the Jannah. He wants everyone to be in Jannah, but not everyone follow. 
Now the next one is Al-Qudra. Al-Qudra means the ability. The ability. And this is where there is some differences between the Athari and the Ash'ari. Okay, the Ash'ari came after the Athari. Athari means like the ones that they come from straight forward from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Those are the Sahaba and how they believed of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is. They did not negotiate. They did not discuss too much. Why? Because they had the Arabic language as a native speaker, native tongue. So they understood those names. They did not have to explain and describe too much. When we say Allah al-Qadir means that he is able of everything. Now we're going to go after Al-Qadir with some of these differences between what the Athari and the Ash'ari. Ash'ari came later on. They start describing more, having more philosophy. The reason why they did that is because a lot of people who are not speaking Arabic, they started coming into Islam. And they started what? They started taking their own language, their own what they believed of their old religion and their from their own language into Islam and they start describing Allah in a wrong way in the in a different way than what is supposed to be like in the original right and so after that they started like the Ash'ari they started to describe more about the names of Allah in a different way however the Ash'ari and the Athari they are both the same the same thing but they just categorize the names of Allah differently Okay, and I'm going to explain a little bit more. Al-Qudra means the ability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytan al-rajim. Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. Allah is able of everything. Some people would ask, well, if Allah is able of everything, can he create a rock that he cannot carry anymore, like more than his ability? Can Allah does that? Yes, he can, right? He can. But why Allah does, doesn't do that? Why, why also? What's the necessary? Exactly. What's the purpose of it? Allah will not do something is purposeless. Allah can do anything. Allah can come in a form of a human if he wants to. Because, you know, that's what the Christians would say, would say, well, can Allah do anything? Well, Allah can also come in a human just like, like the same uh, Jesus. Do you mind, sisters online, if I go a little bit uh, back into my presentation about Islam? Because we have sisters here that they are uh, they're new Muslims and we have a non-Muslim, inshallah. If you don't mind, inshallah. And we can continue this next Sunday, inshallah.